we viewed the wrath of a mighty storm. Picking at Brother Michael over here a little while ago, I said, we've heard his name all week. Uh, Hurricane Michael and the devastation that was left That hurricane hit this hit Florida with a hundred and fifty five mile hour wind and did destruction, devastated the place. They're still finding bodies in the runs. I said last night that they had found eighteen bodies already. In yesterday's news, Brock Long, the director of FEMA, was criticizing residents and leaders, mayors and so forth, for not leaving their residents and staying there during the storm. For not heeding the warnings. They had a whole week to prepare. Doesn't sound like long, does it? But I saw, Linda and I were planted by the TV watching the storm as it approached, and it showed those newsmen that had gone down to get high ratings on their program and so forth. But it showed them in the hotel. As the storm began its destruction. And it showed them that maybe they shouldn't be there. Although they came to film it for us and share it for us. It was indeed an awful storm. A lot of people refused to leave because they had houses and stuff. You know how much good a houses and stuff does a dead person? Well, these people had a week almost to prepare. Warning for going out about the approaching storm heading up from Cuba. People said, I'm going to stay. Now, the, the warning that I want us to look at today, you don't have a week to prepare. As a matter of fact, you may not have a day to prepare because you don't know when this time is going to start. But I can tell you this much. Our Lord told us that it was going to be this way. And I would bid you, you need to prepare for that which is coming on the earth. Yeah. And y'all listen as we read these scriptures. We begin with verse 7. And they asked Jesus, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be? And when these things shall come to pass, Jesus said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. False Christ, false prophets. Verse 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For those things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. Then said, then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, 
kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, pestilences, fearful sights. Great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands upon on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Ye shall be betrayed both by parents, brethren, kinfolk, friends. Some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus said they hated me. If you follow me, they're going to hate you. For there shall not a, a hair of your head Perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon earth the distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring or the hurricane or the storm or whatever it causes to do it. Tsunami waves. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see, and look at that word capitalized, the Son of Man. Guess who that's talking about? Our Savior. Coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye, that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, look real close at this verse, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words Shall not pass away. Amen. But we've got a lot to be thankful for today. We need to be thankful that we have modern technology that they could warn us a week ahead that, hey, there's a storm out there. That's brewing. Back in the year of 1900, you historians could tell us. What happened down here in Galveston? The greatest natural disaster they say ever. Can you imagine in 1900, they didn't have a telephone, much less a cell phone. Not even sure they had a telegraph. I'm not sure what year that was, but they could send signals. But they had no modern communication. Therefore, they estimate eight to 10,000 people died when the storm hit Galveston because they had no way of warning the people that they need to go to higher ground. So we're thankful for that. We need to be thankful that we have those that warn us that a storm is brewing. And we need to be thankful that we have means of escaping. We can go get in the car and we can get out from here. That seems trivial, the things I mentioned. But we've got a lot to be grateful for compared to what the past had. The folk, the 
I'm not focusing on a hurricane. I'm talking about something much more drastic than that. I'm talking about something that deals with your life and your eternal soul. Amen. There is a storm of brewing. And all these things that our Lord said would happen are going to happen and are happening as we speak. And verse 8, back to you if you have your paper and keep it handy there because I'm referring back to this, these scriptures. Our Lord said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ. I saw a picture recently on Facebook, last week, matter of fact, had a picture of one of our former presidents. And he said, you don't need a Messiah. I'm your Messiah. So, man can't do what Christ has done. But many will come wanting you to fall down and worship them. And I can tell you this much, the Lord told us ahead of time that false Christ shall come. They have come and they continue to come. A man by the name of Joseph Smith wrote a book called the Book of Mormon. And he equaled it to the word of God or superior even. And I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Let no man add unto the words of this book. Amen. Neither shall any man take away. And Joseph Smith, when he wrote that book, had 33 wives at one time. And yet people are still following after that false teaching. You see these guys riding around on a bicycle, white shirt and a tie. And they do that for two or three years. One of them said to me, here, you're so back. We want to talk to you about Joseph Smith. What he said. Now he was being accurate because that's what he was talking about. But folk, the Lord gave us 66 books that make up this Holy Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. This is His completed Word. Amen. He said Himself, that one, that which is complete, that which is in part shall be done away. And we know that that's a fact. Stay away from <coughs> false teachers. How do we know a false teacher? Search the word of God. If it's contrary to what God said, it's false. And I go back to a simple scripture where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And folk, you can't get there any other way. There is no other way than through Him. Folk, I don't care how good you may be or think that you may be. You're not good enough to get to heaven on what you do on your merits. If that was a fact, then Jesus sent His Son to die in vain. Excuse me, the Father sent Jesus His Son. Well, I should have phrased that. If we could have merited or been good enough to be saved, then our Lord had His Son nailed to the cross in vain. But false Christ have come, they continue. False prophets have come. And I can tell you this, but stay away from them. Verse 9 and 10 says there will be wars and rumors of wars, and that's been the case Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You know where all that started at? Started in a garden, or right after the garden, when they were put out of the garden. 
when Cain murdered his only brother, Abel, and war has gone on ever since. But the Lord told us the end is not yet when we see those, hear those wars and commotions and so forth. But I want to get to the meat of verse 11 says, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, pestilences, fearful sights, great signs shall there be from heaven. A few days ago in Indonesia, the last count I heard, there was over 1,400 deaths counted. People lost their lives. Because of an earthquake. Well, our Lord told us that those things would come. But look at verse 12. Verse 12 says, But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and they're going to persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You shall be hated both by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends, and some of you shall they call to be put to death. Well, we're not better than our Lord. Our Lord was crucified because he took a stand against the Jews. And the Jews cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Right. When Pilate asked, what shall we do with this man? It was the Jews that said, kill him. We don't need him. We don't want him. But it says persecution is going to come. I don't know how many of you read the papers this week. What happened down in Egypt. There's a large article in the, chron in the Chronicle about it. The article began, it says, 17 condemned to death. Now, this happened to be on our side this time. 17 Muslims were sentenced to death in Egypt this past week. 19 life sentences were given, and a whole bunch more with lesser sentences to those Muslims because they are persecuting churches and Christians. Now that was to our side. I was surprised. And the article further said that, now when I, I was in Egypt the last time in 1970, when I was there it was hard to find a church. But they said, to, the newsreel did this week, that 10% of all Egyptians were Christians. That's usually not true, is it, of those Muslim-torn countries. But folks, they'll put you to death because you use the name of Christ. And that's tragic. Well, our Lord warned us, didn't he? Persecution is coming and has already come. But verse 16 I read a moment ago said you'll be betrayed both by parents and brethren kinfolks and friends. Our Lord said if we're going to come after him we must put family second didn't he? He deserved first place. I had a, my own dad growing up. I loved him. He had his attributes and he had his pluses and minuses. But he said something which I disagree with him until I, I go to the grave. He said, don't say anything about other religions. Well, folk, it was religion that crucified our Lord. If religion is coming and teaching you a lie, if I come and tell you there's one way to get to heaven and that's Jesus Christ, and another fellow comes along and tells you it's how good you live that's going to get you to heaven, 
One of us has lied. Because the Lord said, I'm the way. Not one of the ways, I am the way. And folks, since he's an author of life, I'm going to take his side. But folks, listen to me a minute. The Lord allowed me to get before you this morning and bring you a message from his word. He entrusted me, and you did by coming and sitting before him. But if I got up here and taught you a wrong way, to get to heaven. If I told you it was how good you lived and so forth, then I've lied to you. Right. And you're going into hell if you believe that, condemned. Because you trusted in your own righteousness. And I've been a liar, the propagator of a liar, if I taught that th such a thing. And one day I'll stand in before the throne of judgment. All of us will. But folk, I'm not going to stand there saying that I taught the people that he set before me a lie. Somebody said, don't say anything about them now. They're not hurting. Yes, they are. They're teaching a lie. Put to death, it says. Some of you will be. Some of us will be. In verse 17, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Folk, I didn't say that. Our Lord said it. Should we read it again? It's brief. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Folk, if you take a stand for the Lord... The devil's not happy. That's why the scripture says he, he walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Be hated by the masses for taking a stand. But look at verse 18 and 19 quickly. I like this. The Lord just said you're going to be put to death. Now verse 18 and 19 he says, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your soul. You say, folk, how can that be? I can tell you exactly how it can be. When they cut the Apostle Paul's head off in the Mamertine prison, that quick he was ushered into with a new body Amen. into the presence of our Lord. And he already had that desire. He said, man, I got a desire to stay and serve people here, but I'd rather go be with him. And what the power did in Rome when they put Paul to death, they ushered him into the presence of Jesus. Oh, if you want to be anywhere on, on this planet or in the heavens, that's a place to be in the presence of Jesus. Or you can praise his mighty name and thank him for paying that price that we couldn't pay for our sins. Verse 25 and 26 says, And I shall be signed in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, but it says perplexed. A person that's perplexed has a problem with no solution that they know of. Reading the other day of the alarming rate of suicide of people that are trying to snuff their life out because they are, as the scripture says, they are perplexed. 
Call it what you will, but it's a great number percentage-wise of people that lose their life today because they took their own life. There'll be plenty of signs in heaven and on the earth. Now, if you will, verse 27. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Oh, we're going to see him. He's going to bring us with him at this juncture. This is at the end of the tribulation period, I believe. I believe we're going through that tribulation. But we're going to see all the nations of the earth are going to bow down and say, He is Jesus. Matter of fact, 28, and I'm going to close there. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. In verse 32 said, This generation would not pass away until all be fulfilled. I believe there's a generation that's going to experience all these things that our Lord pointed out that we're coming on this earth. And folk, I got to tell you again, it's not something like a storm out here in the Gulf that you don't know where it's going or when it's going to hit or if it's going to hit. But the Lord's Word is history already recorded before it happens. Amen. It's something we're not going to get around. Elvis sang that song. It's too high, you can't get over it. Too round, you can't get around it. And too low, you can't get under it. Folk, it must be. Do I understand all of it? No, sir. But I got to warn you that these things are going to happen. If I don't warn you, I haven't done what the Lord called me to do. I'm going to tell you this morning, if you're here and you've never put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we're going to give you that privilege right now to trust Him as your Savior as our song leader and pianist comes. We're going to have a